Welcome to Super Screen's headline news on the R. There are some stories making rounds at this time. Kogi State Secretariat of the Social Democratic Party, SDP, in Lokoja has been torched by alleged political talks. Report says the SDP office was earlier attacked on Sunday, where windows and doors of the Secretariat were shattered, while banners, posters and other campaign materials at the Secretariat were destroyed and replaced with the posters of the candidates of the All Progressives Congress, APC, Governor Yaya Bilo. The United Nations Children Education Fund, UNICEF, has listed Nigeria as the largest contributor to global pneumonia debt. A new analysis released by UNICEF on Monday claimed that pneumonia kills more children globally than other infections. UNICEF in the report said pneumonia claimed the lives of more than 800,000 children under the age of 5 last year globally, or one child every 39 seconds. Acting UNICEF representative to Nigeria, Pernil Ironside, said the biggest risk factor for child pneumonia deaths in Nigeria includes malnutrition, indoor air pollution from the use of solid fuels, and outdoor air pollution from other sources. Lagos State Government says it has apportioned a huge chunk of next year's budget to education because of its belief that education remains the bedrock of development. Speaking to Super Screen Television at the occasion of a book reading partnership between TOS Educational Initiative and the Obasa Foundation to mark the birthday of the Speaker of the Lagos State House of Assembly, Mudashiru Obasa, founder of TOS Educational Initiative, Ololade Salvador and chairman, House Committee on Education in the Lagos State House of Assembly, Yinka Ogundimu, enumerate gains of education. What, what we need to do is just to create an new environment for good learning. And that is exactly what we have done today. The governor has just presented the um, budget for Lagos State today. And, uh, Education has the highest vote, you know. I mean, over 140 billion naira to be spent on the education for the 2020 uh, financial year. So if they pass into appropriation law, so and I think that will really go a long way to really support the the, the needed um, materials and the uh, environment for good learning. We are trying to bring back that culture of reading and writing, conducive reading and writing. We want to engage them to read and write all the time. So we're encouraging parents also to support them. Stop buying toys. Stop buying things that they, they of no value to them. Give them a book that they can read, something that they can learn from. And I'm glad I'm happy about history being coming back to school now. Government must fund education adequately. When education is funded very well, all these things will just be falling on one another. TOS Educational Initiative has been behind enhancing book reading culture in Lagos State in recent years. Nations have been charged to imbibe the culture of giving back to communities and fatherland as a way of contributing to nation building. Some members of ASAN communities in Edo State, under the umbrella of ASAN Development Transformation Initiative, EDATI, disclosed this to journalists in Lagos recently. If each community comes together and works together and supports government and develops little aspects of their community and provides education for their people, very soon 
we'll be able to eradicate this issue of uh, uh, out-of-school children in Nigeria. If we come together, build a few roads, at least we'll be able to do that. It's a structure already we have put in place to make sure that it's not about promoting individual capability or individual self-interest. It's about promoting what EDATI is doing and what is EDATI is all about. What is the meaning of EDATI? Asian Development and From the, what you have heard here, do you hear anybody's name? No. In the areas of encouraging the exposure of culture outside Islam. For instance, uh, we have plans to uh, organize clinics for children outside Islam land who are born outside of Islam, like children in America, in Lagos, in England, in Europe, to speak the Islam language. We are trying to put all that into play. We are trying to also um, have a program in such a way that we can bring our kids together maybe once every year, maybe in December, we can all uh, host our kids and interact with them in Asia and also send some books to them to their various houses and encourage the parents also to speak, uh, communicate with their children in Asian languages because that is the major issue. With initiatives like this, it is expected that other communities will take a cue from Edati. Biliaminu Akinsonya Street, Ejibo, famous for its gridlock traffic, has been fixed by men of the Lagos State Police Command, Ejibo Division, led by the Divisional Police Officer, Chief Superintendent of Police, Olabisi Okuobi. This was discovered during a routine community check by Super Screen's news crew to the area where we saw officers patching the potholes that has for long been the cause of traffic in that area. <laughs> Some residents and commuters who spoke to Super Screen commended the effort of the officers and charged them to do more. And I then try, then try. I try to see them, the way they come through this road, I like it. I like it. As this, this road, then so many people they are following this road. Where they don't know how the road will be. As the police is there, where then they come and do them, I like it. We just thank our DPO in Ejibo. Because we never saw this kind of before. So, police woman, we can do it for us. But we thank our DPO in Ejibo. I see the draw. Uh, Billy Amino, Akisoya, sweet. The galloping they are entering here is no good. Even though people they are crossing here, they are complaining about this space. So, I appreciate what they do. So, God will be straight of their power in Jesus. When I, when I heard that, is the DP that is doing all these things. I, I was very, very happy. I've been praying for him, for, for her. I mean, I've been praying for her. As in, it's not, it's not easy for a DPO to just stand up and say, "Okay, let me." Uh, I swear, he has done. She has done a great job. If a police officer can be doing this, in fact, I really appreciate her. In fact, I've been here about her. Whatever, whatever I've been doing, uh, Ejibo, there's mostly those uh, boy, area boys and uh, all those, uh, what do you call them, Agbole uh, boy. At least since these women are around here, everybody is living comfortably. Aspiring gospel artists have been charged to put God first above financial gains in their pursuit of success in the music industry. This position was given by some seasoned gospel artists during a recent event organized in Lagos State. When you, when you put your mind on the money, it's just like <laughs> when you're after, you, the only thing you're thinking of, you're after money. But why not build up, your, build up your mind? Think outside the box and trust me, when you have Christ, the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and every other thing shall be added unto you. When you pursue the money, 
let me tell you guys the truth. There is more, more money in the kingdom than anywhere. So for me, I stick with the kingdom. I, I go down with the kingdom. I die with the kingdom because that is what I live for. I, I do a lot of reals. I was personal reals as most times. And, you know, it's something I have passion for. And when you have passion for something, I believe you want to put in so much to make sure the world fuels you. They equally advise aspiring artists to seek God's face and clarity of purpose before venturing further. First thing you need to know and understand and get is to be sure what God has called you to do. So you don't exert energy in the wrong places. You need to be sure that God wants you to be in the line of music, in the line of business, in line, whatever he wants you to do. Find it out and then plunge into it with all your heart, all your might and then go for it. So for, for, for the young ones in music, I will say to you, get someone who can mentor you on the line where you are going to and it will be easy. You'll be able to fly high and you know, achieve what, God's want you to, what God wants you to do and then be in the center of his will. That's what I would say to, to, to my younger ones coming up. City Pride Achievers have awarded Bolatito Shoumi, popular for her role in Papa Jazz School as Miss Pepeye, as the most consistent actress of the year 2019. At the ceremony, she dedicated the award to Almighty God and the CMC Gladiators family. Super Screen Television congratulates Bolatito Shoumi for this worthwhile achievement. The Lagos State Waterway Authority, LASWA, is partnering the management of Food and Beverage Recycling Alliance, FBRA, to clean up debris on the waterways. LASWA General Manager Olu Adamilola Imano, who disclosed this to journalists in Lagos State, said FBRA has signed an agreement with the Lagos State Government to provide infrastructure for the boats to berth and also to create master points for waste collection around the waterways. A 37-year-old Buddhist nun in Vietnam's Central Highlands has died of swine flu, bringing the total number of victims killed by the disease to four. The patient initially experienced mild fever and fatigue before growing malnourished when she was taken in for private health checkup. Swine flu is a respiratory disease caused by the virus H1N1, originally found in pigs, which causes cold, sore throats, coughs, and fever. Turkish President Recep Erdogan says it would inform U.S. President Donald Trump that Washington must do more to implement a ceasefire deal agreed in order to halt Turkey's offensives in Syria. You will recall that Turkey struck a deal with the United States on October 17 to suspend its military offensive in northern Syria in return for Washington ensuring a pullout of Syrian Kurdish forces from a proposed safe zone. Turkey launched the offensive last month to push Kurdish militants back from its border and create room to repatriate Syrian refugees. Arsenal manager Unai Emery has been given a vote of confidence by the club's hierarchy following the poor run of form. The Gunners have gone five games without a win in all competitions and now sit eight points adrift of the top four following a 2-0 defeat at Leicester City's King Park Stadium. During the staff event, Senlei and Valakestan expressed their disappointment with the results and performances so far but insist Emery is the right man to steer the Gunners to a top four finish. Brazil and Chelsea winger William says proper sanction should be imposed on Dynamo Kiev after former teammate Tyson was targeted with racial abuse by opposition supporters on Sunday. The game was brought initially to a halt before the forward was dismissed by referee Mikola Balakin after play resumed, much to his disbelief. Tyson addressed the incident later on his official Instagram account, vowing to never allow such intolerance silence him that's it on super screens headline news on the r a big thank you for watching stay tuned to other interesting programs right here on super screen television